let's do some kind of postmortem of the elections, which many have criticized as lacking in integrity, while others believe, well, there are some positives that could be taken away from the process. In fact, there has been a major controversy over the requisite parameters for a president to emerge in a presidential election as stipulated and enshrined in the Section 134 of the Constitution, the spread and the issue of the two-thirds required in 24 states, uh, which is um, uh, two-third of the 25% uh, in two-thirds of the state, which is 24, plus the FCT as stipulated by the law. Let's get some insight. Don't forget, I told you, we'll be speaking with the governor of uh, Adama State on the program, but let's touch base with uh, a prominent Nigerian senior lawyer, Mr. Femi Falano, senior advocate of Nigeria, who is live with us virtually. It's good to see you, Mr. Falano. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. What a time it is in our political history. Our elections are, are being uh, debated and issues coming out of this election are also being heavily deba debated. I know you are a, a reputable lawyer in the land, and I know that you know the rules guiding um, uh, substantial um, cases before the court, and I know you might not want to delve into those matters, but without having to touch on the meat of the petitions before the presidential election tribunal, there's been a lot of controversy. Can you please give some kind of uh, expansion and exp uh, some kind of explainer on what has divided many Nigerians on the issue of the Section 134 of the Constitution in just simple terms without delving into the meat of what is before the court? Well, I had expressed an opinion on uh, Section 134 of the Constitution on the 23rd of January this year. That's about a month before the presidential election. On that occasion, uh, I expressed a legal opinion. Uh, and that was why I was very hesitant to join the bandwagon when lawyers started giving political interpretation of that section. Um, my position this year, in January this year, and I think it was my respected colleague, Olisa Agbakova, that expressed concern and drew the attention of the INEC to Section 134 of the Constitution and that it might create some problem. And on that occasion, uh, through your medium, uh, I did state that there is no electoral college in Nigeria, and therefore the votes cast, you know, or recorded in any part of are equal. Uh, Section 134 of the Constitution specifically requires a winner of a presidential election to meet certain requirements. The first one is to score the majority of lawful votes, and the second one is the territorial spread. Two thirds majority of the states and the federal capital territory. And since the federal capital territory has been interpreted to be the 37th state in Nigeria, for the purpose of the Constitution, I didn't see any controversy at the material time, and that was when I expressed my opinion. But now that it has become a serious legal issue, uh, and the matter is now pending, court, I'm very, very reluctant to speak definitively on this section, because there are decisions of our court on the status of Abuja, two judgments of the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. There is also the judgment of the Supreme Court on the quality of votes recorded in every state in the country. And so since these decisions are available, to all lawyers in Nigeria, to all my colleagues, I would have expected the debate 
to be anchored on decided cases, particularly by the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. Again, as I said, since the matter is pending in the Court of Appeal already, uh, it has been raised in, in some of the petitions to that extent. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh, expected to express my opinion, so that one does not uh, uh, disrespect the court. But as, as I did say, I express an opinion when the election had not held a month of the presidential election. And I stand by my position, which is that Abuja is, has been interpreted to be at the seventh state in it. I, I can't go beyond that for now, Shim. I know, I know you can. That is, uh, for a lot of, it's been a lot of controversies and there's been a lot of division uh, along party lines on the interpretation. Some who say, oh, it comes interpreted. Some say, no, it has been decided by our court. Of course, section 134, for those who do not have their constitution very close, let me state, state brief, I mean, just concisely, what the, uh, the, the lawyer, uh, Mr. Falano, just stated now, and because Mr. Falano doesn't want to go deeper into it, you might as well just go onto China's YouTube page, and uh, uh, that's uh, ChinaStvWeb.com, and you can also find out for yourself what Mr. Fallon has said earlier. We do, we are not lawbreakers. We do not want to uh, touch on what the, uh, the, the courts are going to be deliberating on. Highest number of votes, and of course, spread to third, 25% uh, into third of the state of the Federation, plus the AFCT. We'll be hoping and looking forward to what the courts will decide on this matter. Um, perhaps we'll lay that to rest if there's anything that happened. And so, Mr. Fallon, I'm not sure a lot of people imagined that the 1979 scenario could play out. Uh, for some people, I said, uh, this is looking like, it may not be exactly like this. Did you envision that this election might be, for example, we had uh, perhaps the, the lowest uh, percentage of vote that have been won by anybody that has been declared as president-elect in this country in this election. Did you ever thought that this election was going to turn out like this? Well, every regards to our experience in the past, and once it was clear that there were more than two strong candidates, uh, I had embassy that we might have this kind of scenario. But there are people who are suspected that uh, we might be uh, having a second or rerun election. Uh, for those who are the fear that the clear winner might not emerge. So there's nothing that has happened, to be honest with you, that can be said to be strange. Um, elections in Nigeria, since 1999, have had over bloated figures. And since 1999, what to call voter apathy might not capture the, the problem. Uh, we may now begin to interrogate the figures that are recorded, the figures, the number of people registered to vote. Uh, a, a friend was telling me there were rats in his own in his own area in one of the states. Up to 19, uh, 2019, the least votes from some river line, river line area would be in the neighborhood of at least one thirty thousand. But this time around, it's barely five thousand because you have to be captured by the reverse machine before. You before you can be said to have voted. So we are asked about 93 people registered 
to vote and were told that 87 million collected their PPC in a place like Lagos, 6.2 million people collected their PPC. But at the end of the day, the presidential election attracted only 1.2 million. So those figures that were recorded in the past for majority of the states have been taken away by the beaver's machine. And that is why the number has gone down. Yes, you might have recorded voter apathy in a number, in a number of states. But in terms of the presidential election, where it was reported by the media that there was a light turnout, at the end of the day, we're talking of barely 25 million voters. So, it is high time, you know, the media, you know, began to examine these figures. And that's my position. All right. So, so let me, I'm not the man who's taking a bath. Yeah. Because I have an idea of how some of these figures are generated. And at the end of the day, the number of voters that really show up does not usually add up. All right, let's uh, let's go. Again, I'll, I'll, our elections are always ended in tribunals, mm. and that was why uh, I had uh, uh, once described what goes on in Nigeria as tribunalization of democracy, increasing involvement of our court in elections. In it, it does not happen anywhere in the world. For instance, we had one thousand. 200 pre-election cases, 600 appeals in the Court of Appeal, and about 120 in the Supreme Court. Now, election petitions have been filed. 400 judges, seven judges, have been removed, I mean, invited to participate in election petition, uh, to hear election petition cases. And for the next six months, the cases in those courts, the cases in the courts manned by those judges will have to be adjourned. Very soon, a peace will arise from the election petition tribunal. Again, a peace in other matters are going to suffer, including matters that have to do with the liberty of citizens. So many Nigerians are complaining now. Why should you, why should you have courts that are saddled with the responsibility of hearing only election petition and a peace arising from them? So it requires pass a review of the suggestion that one had made before now. We have a pool of retired judges. Why don't we invite them to handle election petitions while the regular courts will settle down and ensure that their work is not disrupted? All right. Mr. Falano, let me jump in quickly. I, I have a, a few issues that I'd like you to touch on, uh, but uh, if, I'd like them to be tackled quickly. Um, there is some worries, though, uh, as we're approaching some of the hearings and the court, especially the presi presi presidential election tribunal. Do you have confidence, based on what has happened uh, recently in our courts about and now, the, the politics that we've seen in the land and the intensity and the tension that we have seen in the land, what is your biggest fear as far as the integrity of the judiciary is concerned today in respect of these petitions? 
So I'm not going to join some of my colleagues who are rubbishing the courts. I'm not going. I go to the court on a daily basis. If I have a problem with any court or any judge for that matter, what I'm required to do is to write a petition and submit to the NJC, National Judicial Council. But I cannot, for goodness sake, embark on what I call the fallacy of generalization. Oh, Nigerian courts are bad. Nigerian judges will not dispense justice. For me, once you prepare your case, for me, I don't think there should be any cost. So, I mean, Election, so elections have been annulled in Nigeria by our courts. Our courts had other rerun elections, even in the case of presidential elections. One of them, I think the case of uh, Buhari and uh, Yaradwa and Achiku and Yarad. The president elected escaped narrowly. It was a decision of four to three justices of the Supreme Court. But that election of 2007, the winner of the election, the late President Umaru Yaradja did say publicly that the election was highly flawed. In some of the states, not less than five, elections were held. And rerun elections were ordered. And as far as I'm concerned, if election petitions are well prepared, and it's much easier now than before, because in the case of Buhari and Obasanjo, uh, the late justice part actually did say that to win a presidential election, I mean, uh, 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 that is no longer the case. With electronic, you know, uh, uh, technology that has been introduced into our electoral system, it is no longer so onerous to prove uh, 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 election petitions. Uh, in this case, if you are able to get your Beavers report, because what is not usually recorded over voting, uh, uh, writing of figures, manipulation of results, it is now very easy to deal with those matters. In the case of uh, I think a number of states. The case between Obi, that's Obi and Ingege. Uh, the current minister of uh, labor and employment. They were caught for almost three years. You had a man who didn't win election, who was in power for three years. So at the time the case was decided, and the argument arose as to whether somebody who didn't win election will be in office for three years. Why the winner will let just go in there for 12 months? And I think on that occasion, Mr. Peter will be the same. I just want to go and complete the tenure. And I have to say, what tenure? He, he had no tenure. His, his tenure is unknown to law. So go to court and ask for an interpretation. And of course, the Supreme Court is say that, you know, the day you are inaugurated is when your time of office begins to run. So we have gone through all this before, and not this right. All right. So, I mean, it then brings me to Section 36, Mr. Falano, and what uh, the NBA president had uh, entered. And uh, he has said, for issue of fairness, and uh, Section 36 of the Constitution talks about the right to fair hearing, and that uh, uh, established tribunal by law and the constituted in such a manner has to secure its independence and impartiality. Would you subscribe that the presidential election tribunal proceedings should be televised? I, I, I've always uh, campaigned for that. Uh, and that is the trend now in Africa. In Ghana, 
the proceedings are televised. In Kenya, the proceedings are televised. Because judges, you know, you have nothing to hide. You invite the media, invite members of the public. When there is order in the court, everybody should be part of it because we are all part of the election. And so the decision of the courts on the election should not be shrouded in secrecy. For that reason, I support the call by the president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Yakubo Mekar, SAN, that this the proceeding should be televised. It's in the interest of our judges. It's in the interest of the public. And again, it enhances the credibility of the judiciary. All right. So I'm very sure yeah. that the suggestion will be seriously considered. So we'll see how things pan. My, my final question tonight is in the area of violence, and I just have about 60 seconds to go. It's in the area of violence. And uh, Sarah today was coming out to saying that Annex should investigate um, those governors who are said to have allegedly perpetrated violence in the election. So the question would be, does Annex have the powers? If, in fact, if they investigate, what becomes of those uh, reports that will be submitted, considering the immunity that some of the governors uh, enjoy? What becomes of that kind of suits that Serap has threatened upon INEC? Well, uh, Serap's position is based on the number of arrests that have been made by the police, the EFCC, uh, SSS. ICPC and the rest of them, and even the military. Uh, some were caught distributing money, inducing voters. Some were, some engaged themselves in killing electoral violence. And I think one of the NGOs had uh, come up with a figure of about 109 people were killed. That was before the governorship election. During the governorship election, more have been added. The governors who are in power are going to lose their immunity in the next couple of months. Now, and they can be pursued thereafter. And that is, the, that is what is going on in the United States of America, where President Trump is being investigated for interfering with the election in Georgia. So, the question of immunity does not arise. INEC is empowered by Section 145 of the Electoral 2022 to prosecute electoral offender. And since INEC says it does not have the power, I mean, the facilities to do that, the Nigerian Bar Association has offered to help. We did it in 2011 successfully. The NBA has now invited, I mean, uh, 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 has requested INEC to sign all the files that have to do with electoral offense. The Inspector General of Police has already ordered all commissioners of police to send the case file to the INEC and I get for all one transmission to the Nigerian Bar Association. Unless we deal with the purity, electoral violence, electoral malfeasance will never stop in our country. And we must make a point this time around. All right. That all those who engage in uh, inducement of voters. Uh, alteration of results, uh, ethnic profiling, and the rest of them will have to be dealt with there. The question of going to the ICC or begging the West to impose peace functions, for me, almost suggests that we're capable to deal with electoral offenses in our country. With the commitment of the Nigerian Bar Association and the INEC, let us begin the process of bringing people to book for a heinous offense. All right. That's my question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Femi Fallon, a right activist and senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you indeed for your thoughts tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much.